Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Kathy Loves to Scrap and I'm coming to you from the land down under today with my version of this month's Stretch the Sketch. I join a group of ladies that are very talented and we take a sketch, this one here from the Scrappy Sisters, these girls are from Australia, and we stretch the sketch. That was a 12 by 12 and I've turned it into a 24 by 12. So this is um, how I've put it together and it is a little bit longer than normal but that's because it is a double layer. I'm using these photos from one of the best days that I had recently when in Alaska and we we're in Glacier Bay. And this photo here is of Hubbard, uh, Hubbard Glacier and it is massive. It is so awe-inspiring. Um, you cannot begin to imagine what it is like. It was cold, that's why I've got the jacket on. So despite the sun in the photos and um, the uh, glimmer that it looks, the cold was radiating off that ice and it was very, very cool but spectacular. So I'm also going to be using three um, Distress inks and oxides to create my background. I've got some mulberry paper and some vellum, and they're going to become the three aspects that are in the background of the layout designed by the girls. And I'm going to use cardstock to create my base, which is unusual for me, but because of how this uh, layout has been designed and the colours I want to utilise, it marries nicely for this layout. So I am going to have a horizon line in it, I'm going to have my mountains in it, and then I'm going to have water shimmering down the bottom just like the photos. So in order to do that, I'm going to start with um, my white cardstock and get that prepared ready for my base. I have two pieces here, one will be carrying across to the other, and that's how I'm going to stretch the sketch. So to start with, I'm going to use the packaging technique and I'm starting with uh, spruce pine and that's my lighter colour and I'm going to put that into um, my page because if I start with the lighter colour, it doesn't get lost uh, in the colour mix when I start building up my uh, well flow of water. The next colour that I choose to use on here is uh, the mermaid lagoon and it's a lighter blue and i'm just adding the water here by spritzing it and then using the packaging to spread it across the layout so it's the lighter blue and to top it off i'm going to use the charted uncharted mariner which is a much stronger color and that's reflecting of the ice in the glacier so this is how i've created the flow. It's um, one of the patches that the girls have in their layout design and it, I, thought, I thought it was actually reminiscent of the water movement across the bay. So I'm using mulberry paper here and this is quite tough mulberry and in order to give it the frayed look I have put a wet mark through the middle where I am now stretching the fibres and it is quite tough and I'm not normally mulberry paper I can tear. This one is quite um, dense with the uh, fabric running through it. So I'm just uh, cutting off the edge there to thin it down but I've torn it across to give it the jagged edge. With the vellum I'm going to create my mountain peaks that are going to be the third component of the uh, background that the girls create in their sketch and I'm going to use the overlapping vellum to create the mountain range. Now um, I have kept the mountains quite sharp because in Alaska that's what they look like. They are quite sharp, the mountains. Um, I heard them described as new mountains. They're not like, they haven't been eroded yet and that's a pretty good description of what they look like. They're so different to the mountains that we're used to um, there, yeah, that we're used to here in Australia where they have smoothed off with erosion over time. So I'm just highlighting here with salty ocean uh, around the edges just so that that stands off the white background of the page and gives it a little bit of shadowing and effect when it goes together. Now because I have a double page I'm going to gut two of the navy blue um, and they're going to be my borders. I'm going to bring down my uh, 
white cardstock by a quarter of an inch on one side and three quarters of an inch from the top. That allows me to give an even around the outline of this uh, double layout. So the first one that I'm going to put down, <coughs> I'm going to marry it right to the edge here because that's going to the left hand side and then I'm going to use it as a guide to get my right hand side one into place and so that they me measure up with that equal balance across the two pages so it looks like they're a the single page. Now I work in a single page space because that's my usual choice so I'm really sorry that you're seeing one page come together at a time. I Here I'm going to put in this mulberry paper and I first of all thought I'd go the jagged way to the top but then I realised no that's meant to be like the glacier melting into the water and being reflected across the water so I turn it around and that's where the uh, torn edge of the mulberry paper goes so that it melds into the base and that's the second component of the girls um, sketch where they had the three different backgrounds in behind their photos so so far I have got my water I have got my uh, hint at a glacier and now I'm putting it in my mountains and to do that I'm using the vellum as I said and to adhere that I'm using double sided tape because you can't see it in there. Um, I did ink the bottom of that uh, one in behind that you can see and that does show but once I put the photo in it's not showing. I realised my mistake before I continued on with the rest of them because I didn't want the bottom showing through. I'm putting in this one over here to the right so I have flipped it basically so that I have the mirror image and that's also reflecting of the mirror image in the photos which works nicely and marries the page across harmoniously. I've cut out a title on my Cricut. Um, this one I've called it Le Leviathan because the glacier is <laughs> Leviathan. It is massive and this title reflects that uh, imposing uh, natural phenomena. It's just an amazing sight. Uh, you can see it in National Geographic, you can watch it on TV, but to actually be up close and seeing it in real life is just um, mesmerizing. I spent my whole time out on deck that day watching, just viewing such an amazing and natural uh, beauty that, you know, like, I cannot even begin to tell you what it was like. Um, I can tell you that none of these photos have been doctored. They are just purely straight out of my camera. Uh, that is how magnificent and spectacular the colours are there. And they tell me that the blues are because it's the light, the, the easiest light for um, the light spectrum to be um, reflected, and that's true. Blue light is the... Um, lowest level on the light spectrum and that's why when you come up to a glacier you see all the blues throughout and depending on where the angle of the sun is the water was either looking blue or it was looking turquoise but you can see in my photo there at the top how still that bay was that day and how we were able to just like have a mirror pond as we moved through and up close to that um, magnificent magnificent glacier so I've just put down my photos now the girls have got uh, portrait style photos on their sketch um, my photos are landscape which is pretty unusual for me because I normally take portraits but these ones are landscape and I've also cut out two icebergs on my uh, cricket to build as the um, additional uh, embellishments to the corners of my photos and I'm just adding in some sequins in the blues and the silvers which are reflective of the ice and the water and the sky and that's basically the only embellishments I'm adding to this layout. I wanted to keep it clean, I wanted to keep it simple, I wanted it to reflect the simple beauty of nature and I've used the three um, embellishment Parts that the girls have in the background, their mixed media hint in the back of their sketch. So I have the inks there with the water, I have the mulberry there for the icebergs, and I have the um, vellum for the mountains. And that's how I've used the three clusters to build this layout. 
I'm just writing in the date um, and where we were and just that it was an awe-inspiring view. And as I said, I wholeheartedly recommend this being on everybody's bucket list. It re you really should get in and see this. It is just magnificent, special. So there's my layout come together and I will have close-ups at the end showing you the double layout where in its full spectrum so that you can see it. Um, you can see the mountains there that I used as one putt component, the mulberry iceberg in there and then the uh, smooching with the uh, plastic and the, what do you call it, oh my goodness, lost for words, the packaging technique down the bottom to get the inks in to create the water. So that's my layout. I am late for this month, but I have managed to do it. Um, check out the playlist that I have listed below of all the other players who were on time and did do an amazing um, array on this uh, uh, scrap sisters sketch. Oh my goodness, I cannot speak today. And <clears throat> it is for September, and they were part of the Scrappy the Scrap Timber Challenge as well, which I really wanted to be a part of, but I just haven't been able to get myself organised. Maybe I'll come back and do it later. Um, and that is how I pulled this single uh, sketch into a double layout. I'm just finishing off here with a messy line so that I have my border complete. And it's showing you how you can take this simple sketch and create a double layout. So that's my take on this uh, month's Stretch the Sketch. Thanks for watching and if there's something here that has inspired you. If not, check out the playlist below, like I said, from all the other players and see how they interpreted the sketch and stretched it across their layouts. This is my take. Um, I hope you can see the different mixed media, the different techniques, something here that you may take away and add to a layout somewhere down the future of your own. This is the left hand side of the page and this is the right hand side of the page. Hope you enjoyed what I've done for you today. I'm Kathy from Kathy Loves to Scrap coming to you from the land down under. Give me a thumbs up if there was something that was of interest or something that you learnt. Let's YouTube know you want to see more of my content. Thank you to all my subscribers and if you haven't thought about it, please do so. Uh, leave me a comment. I will get back to you as soon as possible. I put all my um, scrapping under my tag, Kathy Loves Scrap, on social media, including Instagram, where all my layouts end up, even those without a video. Thanks for watching. Happy scrapping. Till next time.